In this video, I'm gonna be going over 10 Shopify SEO tips that can save you tens of thousands of dollars in agency fees and triple your organic traffic and revenue in a matter of months if applied correctly. We apply every single one of these 10 elements to the stores we work with at our agency and produce consistent results across the board from implementing them, sometimes even faster than a few months. For those of you that are new to my channel, my name is Kai Cromwell, founder of New Seas, and for the past four years, I've been helping Shopify e-commerce sites two to three, even five X the organic traffic and revenue with SEO. We've noticed most stores miss out on at least two of the items that I'm going to share with you. So stick around to the end of the video to make sure you're not leaving any money on the table when it comes to SEO for your e-commerce store. Let's dive in. Tip number one, technical SEO comes first. Just spend two, three hours taking care of the basics, fix your broken links, configure your robots.txt file to ensure proper crawling and compress your images and delete any unnecessary or like unused code from uninstalled apps to keep a page load times to a minimum. Then set up weekly recurring crawls to monitor for any other issues as they arise. That's literally the deepest you should go on Teddy Glass Yo if you want the most bang for your buck. Tip number two, do your keyword research. Keyword research is boring, but it is the foundation for your entire growth strategy. Spend a good amount of time hunting for keywords that are high in search volume, or at least like medium to high, but as low in competition as you can find them. Then from there, map out all the keywords for your home, collection, and product pages. Here's one example of what that would look like for an e-com store. Your homepage, optimized for skincare supplements on a collection page level, vitamin D supplements, and if you sell multiple types of vitamin D supplements, like multiple products, your product page should be optimized for vitamin D supplement pills. Tip number three implement those keywords. Now, you've got all your keywords mapped, time to implement. You want to add them to the following locations on every single page. The title slash h1, which will be your product or collection page title, URL slug, the meta title, the meta description, the image alt text, if you have an image on page, which you likely will, the very first sentence of that page's content, and then naturally throughout the content. Naturally is a bit subjective, Product description, let's say like two, three more times. Collection description, maybe a little bit more, four or five. And if it's a blog post, let's say, that'll be far more because you'll it'll be over a longer, you'll be like 2000 words. So you can mention it a few more times there. Tip number four, build topical authority with blogs. You wanna build topical authority and demonstrate your expertise by writing supporting blog content for every single one of your collections or products. It really depends on how your e-com store is set up and your product catalog. What blogs do is not really drive traffic. I mean, they do do that, but that's not the primary function, at least not when it comes to your SEO. In in fact, it's just the topical authority is intended to demonstrate to both search engines like Google and potential customers that you are the most qualified website brand on the internet to sell your types of products, okay? This builds trust with search engines and users, which is going to help you rank higher, make more money, increase conversion rate, all that good stuff. I like to start with all of my middle of funnel keywords first as those are more conversion focused and I can start making money faster. And then naturally I'll move up to the top of the funnel as I can start capturing like a wider range of users up at the top. Tip number five build internal links to other blogs. This is a huge, and I see brands miss it all the time. If you do not build internal links between blogs, practically every single blog you've ever written will be an orphan page, which is effectively gonna render them useless, right? If you spend, you know, whether it's AI or human written or whatever, you're gonna spend probably a couple hours minimum writing some blogs for your site. If you don't build internal links, it's very, very unlikely that those pages are ever going to get a decent amount of traffic. So all that time you wasted will effectively have been wasted, right? Because if you're not getting traffic, all that time you spent on them will have been for nothing. Make sure to build at least three to five internal links to other blogs in the same cluster by using contextual anchors that are clear to users, okay? In the same cluster, so like you should have blogs built around a certain collection and then another set of blogs built around another collection. That's what I mean by cluster, okay? Here's an example of what that might look like. The first blog topic, let's say you write the best skincare routine of 2024. Then let's say the sentence is using high quality moisturizers that are essential to a great skincare routine. High quality moisturizers would be your anchor and you would link to another article you would have theoretically written, best moisturizers of 2024. Now, if you've got like best moisturizers for men or best moisturizers for women, obviously that would potentially change the anchor a little bit, but you get what I'm saying. Tip number six, update your pages regularly to improve rankings. Now, regularly is a bit subjective. I would say no more than like every other month, maybe three months. But if you want more traffic, you can you can do one of two things, really, if you want more traffic. Either improve rankings on existing pages or create new rankings by creating new pages. One is significantly easier than the other and more efficient. Across the board, more efficient than the other, you can just update the existing page, right? And the three fastest ways to update your page to actually improve the ranking, build new internal links to it from other supporting blog content, add more content that's valuable to users, so like essentially increasing the value of that page, or updating even something as simple as like the meta title or the intro paragraph, even the first sentence um, can really make a massive impact, right? Tip number seven, consistently build backlinks. They're going to help you make so much money. You could start with as, as few as like three to five backlinks a month, but as long as you keep doing it over time, you're going to start winning more, okay? These are going to boost your content efforts. They're going to make your money pages, like your products and collection pages rank higher. And at the end of the day, 
all that's gonna help you do is make more money, which is why you're here. This is especially true for your collection pages, and this is probably one of the fastest mechanisms to help you rank your collection pages higher. I made an entire video actually going over my five-step QA system to build great backlinks for Shopify stores, so make sure to watch that after this video. I'll link it in the description. Tip number eight, use blog traffic to your advantage. Blog traffic is going to convert a lot less than your product pages or your collection pages, right? That's natural. That's because product pages and collection pages are at the bottom of the funnel, whereas blog content is going to be middle and top of the funnel. So if you've got 100 visitors that come organically to a product page, those 100 visitors are going to behave extremely different than 100 visitors who read a blog. But just because they're reading a blog doesn't mean they're not going to convert. They may not convert right away, but that doesn't mean they're never going to convert. So what you can do is a couple things. You can set up email and SMS opt-ins on your blog that way you can capture their email and phone number, then they can enter your funnel that way. You can go for them, you know, next week, next month, whatever. You can also set up Google remarketing ads and hit them with a pixel. And then for the next like 30, 60, 90 days, they're going to see your display ads everywhere. Okay. Our agency brands use this all the time and it works like a charm, especially when you do both of them. Okay. Without, if you don't do either of these, like you may have high blog traffic, but your revenue may not reflect that. Okay. I'd say conservatively, like 80 to 90% of your blog visitors will never go back to your site. If they never go back to your site, or into your funnel, they're never gonna convert. And you'll essentially just have a vanity visitor, like a vanity metric visitor, okay? You don't want that. Tip number nine, create content about your competitors. This is a pretty highly contested one, but we see it working extremely well for our brands, especially like if you are one of the category leaders. Any reasonable consumer is going to do their research before they buy from you or a competitor, okay? Especially like as the ticket price increases, like if you're selling a $100 product, $100 product versus like a $500 product, for example, people are going to do more research the higher that price point is, right? They're going to see how you stack up against your competitors. They're gonna read through your reviews, all that stuff, okay? So while you can't always control the reviews, you absolutely need to make yourself stand out against the competitors. Writing like every single main competitor you have on search or even like in other channels like Meta or Organic Social or whatever, articles quite literally titled you versus competitor name are great opportunities to show you, show them how you're better and display some of your unique selling propositions. You do not need to bash your competitors in these blogs, okay? If you do that, they're actually going to work against you. No reasonable consumer is like, wow, these guys must be great. No, they're they're going to go actually try to think a better more accurately or more likely, which is obviously not what you want to happen. You need to be relatively unbiased, like explain what their unique selling propositions are and explain what yours are. And if you're better than them in, you know, many or most or all of those like USPs, then point that out. Okay. But like, don't just bash them. You got to be relative to advice. Now I will say when you look these up in like SendRush or Ahrefs, you're not going to see a lot of search volume for them. They're not going to all of a sudden like double your blog traffic overnight, but they will likely double, maybe even triple your conversions comparatively to the rest of your blogs. And tip number 10, SEO is not slow, but it will require patience. If you actually fix all your major technical issues, optimize your money pages, start building internal and backlinks in the first 30 days, guaranteed you're going to see some progress in the next few weeks. I actually probably like as soon as next week, if you do all of them like today or through this week. This is not unfortunately like a linear growth path for all brands. You will go up for a little bit, you might go down, right? Rankings will increase quickly. It might go up like five or 10 spots. Then you might fall back two or three. Then you're going to keep climbing as long as you keep implementing these things over time. You've got to execute and trust your game plan without constantly pivoting and changing strategies, okay? Don't do something for a week and then stop or pivot. Keep going. I don't even check like Google Analytics or Google Search Console every week. I might check it like every two weeks. You should execute your strategy, I'd say from at least a minimum of three months and stick to it before making any major changes. If you get to like the 90 day, three month mark and nothing has happened, probably time to pivot. But until then, keep it moving. That concludes the 10 SEO tips you need to rank your Shopify store in 2024. Make sure to follow me and connect on X and LinkedIn. I share new findings and strategies that are working for our clients on there regularly. I also have a full five-hour SEO course going more in depth on how we're able to add thousands of dollars to our clients MRR consistently. It's also a nice community, tons of other e-comrades to connect with. Super great. Check it out. And if you're a brand looking to get off the paid ads hamster wheel and make like two to three more extra revenue through your organic search for your Shopify store, make sure to book a discovery call with us. Find the link in the description below. Totally free. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Peace.